Brenda Louise Condon was born on the 1st of March 1962 and grew up in Clearfield County, Pennsylvania, where she graduated from Clearfield High School in 1980. After high school, Brenda married. The couple went on to have two children. However, the marriage did not work out and the couple divorced. The children remained with their father so they didn't have to move schools though Brenda maintained visitation rights. By all appearances, Brenda and her ex-husband maintained a good relationship, and despite moving on, her children always remained her priority. She currently lived with her boyfriend in the 1900 block of Harvest Circle in State College, Pennsylvania. Those who knew Brenda described her as very punctual, reliable and a hard-working individual. This work ethic led her to run a home cleaning company, and to make a bit of extra money, she started working at Carl's Bad Tavern part-time. She would only bartend here for two weeks before she disappeared. On the day of her disappearance, everything seemed normal. Brenda was in a happy place. She had plans to visit her children. The commute from where she lived meant she didn't get to see them as often as she liked. Her birthday was also coming up, and she had plans to spend time with her boyfriend of two years. February the 27th, 1991, Brenda arrived to start her shift at Carlsbad Tavern. The tavern is located in a rural area on State Route 550, two miles north of Belafonte. Although the bar usually attracted a local crowd, its location close to the interstate also brought in passing travellers, wanting a break from the road. Brenda parked her 1986 Mercury Capri in the parking lot and headed inside. It was a bitterly cold Tuesday night, and the bar wasn't very crowded. Brenda spent most of the night making small talk with the few customers that was in, and between approximately 12.45 on 1.15am, the last customers were heading out of the doors. Brenda cleaned up the bar area and she totaled the bar's receipts and put away the deposit so it could be taken to the bank the next day. All Brenda had left to do was turn off the lights and lock up. However, at some point after she finished cleaning up, Brenda disappeared, never to be seen again. Day shift employees showed up at the tavern the next day and noticed Brenda's Capri was still in the parking lot. They thought something was wrong when they found the front door was unlocked, but when they went inside, nothing appeared to be out of place. The bar was neat and tidy, and the lights were off. All the money from the night before was right where it was supposed to be. There was no sign of robbery or any struggle inside the bar, but Condon's black cowboy boots were located in the men's restroom. They appeared to be neatly arranged. They were the only shoes she had with her that night. Investigators are uncertain if the placement of Condon's boots is related to her disappearance. Brenda was reported missing the same day she disappeared but police didn't begin looking for her until March the 2nd, after she missed a visitation period with her children, which is uncharacteristic of her. When the police began the investigation, they discovered none of Brenda's other belongings were found in the tavern, and after checking her car, investigators determined that Brenda's purse and keys were missing. Investigators launched an extensive physical search for Brenda on March the 3rd, using tracking dogs, helicopters and volunteers to assist in combing through the area surrounding the tavern. Unfortunately, there had been heavy snowfall since then, and they were unable to find any clues as to Brenda's whereabouts. Detectives were able to quickly eliminate her ex-husband as a suspect, and focus next on the other man in her life, boyfriend Gregory Palazzari. At the time it was rumoured that he was a drug dealer, 
and some believe her disappearance had something to do with his illegal activities. That rumour would turn out to be true, but it would take investigators years to prove it. In 2009, he was arrested for dealing cocaine. According to detectives, he was bringing in around $50,000 a month, and they believed he had been doing so for years. Even after his arrest, however, they still do not believe he had anything to do with Brenda's case. Authorities would like to question three unidentified Caucasian male patrons who were at Carl's Bad Tavern during the evening Condon vanished. It is not known if any of these men are connected to Condon's case. They are simply wanted for questioning. The first patron is described as 38 to 40 years old, 6 foot 2, wearing a bright blue down jacket and jeans. The second was 25 to 30 years old and 5 foot 8, and wearing a black leather coat, a white button down shirt and jeans. The third patron was approximately 50 years old and 5 foot 8, wearing a short dark coloured jacket dark coloured slacks and a brown plaid shirt. These men are the only customers the police have been unable to identify. Brenda was seen talking to at least one of these men, however no red flags were raised and it seemed to be a friendly exchange. Police would also reveal that certain acquaintances of Condon's have been uncooperative with the investigation but none of them have been named publicly, and none are being called suspects in her disappearance. Unfortunately, Brenda's case remains cold, and as of December 2022, what happened on that cold Tuesday night almost 32 years ago remains a mystery.